Welcome to our show, From China to Appalachia. <laughs> just played is a Chinese folk tune, very famous one. It's called August Flower. Its Chinese name is called Ba Yue Gui Hua Bian Di Kai. As you know, and it's much longer than the English title, right? So we translate into Ch English and shorten it, just, just to get, give you the main island idea. August Flower, that's it. And the melody is very short with two lines. We, we both feel like it's the perfect fit for the Appalachian music style, isn't it? So yeah, that's kind of a uh, great example for our group to share the commonalities of the folk music between US and China, August Flower. And in addition to those commonalities, to see how we can merge some of the Appalachian sounds with a little hint of Chinese music and some of the Chinese sounds, a little hint of Appalachian music. Sometimes we like to say that uh, Marcy and I play Chinese music with an American accent and Chow plays American old time music with a Chinese accent. We're gonna do a song by one of our mentors, one of our great heroines in the music world, a woman by the name of Ola Bell Reed, National Heritage Fellowship Award winner, International Bluegrass Music Association um, I don't remember what the honor was called at the time, but basically she won one of their very early awards. And one of the things that we love about Ola Bell is she grew up in Lansing, North Carolina with all of the traditional music of North Carolina, the ballads, the folk songs, the dance tunes. She played the banjo, she played the guitar. But early in her life, she realized that she loved these sounds and she didn't want to get rid of them, but she also had her own things to say. And she began writing songs long before the word singer-songwriter meant anything. Her family all migrated up to Rising Sun, Maryland, 
And that's the context in which we got to meet her at various different folk festivals and eventually many, many visits in her home. And this is her very best known song. It's a rite of passage for any bluegrass band. And we felt it was a rite of passage for bringing Chow into the high lonesome sound of Appalachian music. This is called High on a Mountain. Remembered. I'm just going to tell you one of our many visits to her house. One of the things we always did was we sang her some of her songs the way we sing them. And she'd look at us and go, you girls have your own way of doing things, don't you? <laughs> Which was a sign of approval from Ola Bell Reed, because she was a revel, a great humanitarian. Well, we're going to swap styles here and go to a little bit of uh, ragtime music with a piece called The Pig Ankle Rag. One, two, oh, one, two, three.
the big ankle rag. Well, it's a good time to introduce you to all the members of the band. Right here on the cello banjo, eventually the ukulele, the mandolin, and the guitar, percussive things, and some vocals. Marcy Markser. Over here on the 700 stringed instrument and a little secret <laughs> percussion to be coming, the queen of the Chinese dulcimer, Chao Tien. And in the middle, multi-talented, amazing person. She plays guitar, banjo, and someone's probably trying to call her right now to book her for a gig. <laughs> And she's a great songwriter, great organizer, community person, Kathy Fink. We'd like you to have a chance to hear the Chinese dulcimer completely on its own. And so, uh, Chow, would you take a solo, please? Yes, so the next one I'm going to do a uh, improvisation based on two folk songs of China. Um, they are folk tunes from northern city. Uh, one is a very slow uh, Arvenki uh, folk tune. Another one is from um, Dongbei, uh, nor northern city. It's a very cold area. Um, I started to do improvisation f six years ago uh, once I encountered this too. <laughs> they, they brought me into the improvisation world, and I never uh, came back from that realm. <laughs> so um, yeah, so here is my improvisation.
is always magic because Chow is now completely addicted to improvis improvisation. something a little different now. Kathy's got this beautiful gourd, gourd banjo. And I have this beautiful doombeck that Barbie loaned me for the day. <laughs> uh, so we're going to put these things together and see what happens. This is a tune called Ruby. Honey, are you mad at your man? And it was uh, originally a fiddle tune, Reuben's Train. Old Reuben had a train, he put it on the track. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles. Well, Cynthia May Carver, who changed her name to Cousin Emmy for the purpose of radio, television, and country music entertainment, took that melody over and she turned it into Ruby, Honey, Are You Mad at Your Man? And it's a great song. She was a phenomenal entertainer in that grand history of women in early country music. She had a great big blonde bouffant hairdo. She wore these dresses and, you know, six inch heels and she played the banjo and the harmonica and the fiddle and she loved everyone. Totally full of energy. And uh, we're gonna try and uh, take her song, Ruby, to another planet. Here we go. <laughs> Ruby so cold Oh, Ruby Honey, are you mad at your man? Oh, Ruby, 
Okay, so the next one I'm going to sing. Not first time, but but very uncommon. <laughs> so Cassie and Marcy uh, encouraged me to briefly sing on the stage while playing, which I uh, barely did before. Uh, so I let them sing with me, but in Chinese as a revenge. It's called Chow's Revenge. revenge. <laughs> So the next one uh, is uh, another famous song called Nan Ni Wan. The translation can be South Muddy Bay. Um, there are three lyrics um, telling a story about Chinese people uh, experimenting a small scale agriculture development to beautify their hometown, where is a place called Nan Ni Wan, South Muddy Bay. So we're going to sing just one uh, lyric together. from China through the singing of Pete Seeger. Makes total sense, doesn't it? You know, when you think about all of the crossroads and the connections that happen, of course, were it not for Pete, 
people like me might not be playing this crazy monster called the five string banjo. And Pete did sign my banjo right here. He protested, of course. He saw Earl Scruggs' signature on there, and he goes, what do you need me for on there? You've got Earl Scruggs. And I said, Pete, just sign my banjo. <laughs> but um, in these current times of so much world turmoil and many specific areas of world, world turmoil, we find this song incredibly potent. Now, it's a song that Chow grew up with. Will you talk about that just a minute? Yeah, this song, it's, uh, it's quite famous, and every Chinese uh, in that time, um, like yesterday we were in Void, the two Chinese audience said, we, we grew up with this tune. If, 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 you, if you play the first line of the melody, they're gonna sing the harmony for the rest of the song together, everybody in, in China. Uh, I actually listened to my parents song this, this, this melody often. Uh, my mom uh, sing it while, while she was cooking, and, um, but I had no idea about the lyrics meaning. Um, I, I just imitate what they, they pronounce <laughs> during they the sing. So uh, until we sat together to figure out what's going on in this song, I noticed, hmm, actually the meaning is good. <laughs> <laughs> the meaning is good, coming from a very surprising place back in 1928 when members of uh, Chiang Kai-shek's army were defecting to the Red Army. And at the time, there were rules of engagement, actual rules of civility that needed to take place during war. And these defectors were mostly illiterate peasants. And so the way they were taught these rules was through a song. And it's the song that we're going to sing. Now, when you think about it, how do we teach? In this country, by the time you're two years old, you can sing the ABCs backwards, forwards, and in between. And if you try for the rest of your life to get rid of that melody, it will not go away. And that's really what this is like. Um, but I think what surprised us the most, based on what we see on TV and in the news reports right now, is what the actual um, eight points of attention. This is called the rules, the three rules of discipline and the eight points of attention. And the eight points of attention are really messages of deep humanity even during times of war. And there will be a sing-along part for you, but we'll start it off uh, kind of boisterously. How's that? Okay. <laughs> for what you buy. 买卖公平. Return everything you borrow. 借东西要还. Pay for anything you damage. 损坏东西要赔偿. Do not hit or swear at people. 不打人骂人. Do not damage crops. 不损坏庄稼. Do not take liberties with women. 不调戏妇女. Do not ill-treat captives. Now on Pete's recording of this, he managed to get the whole audience to sing along on it or whistle if you prefer to whistle. You'd rather have me sing, and for singing, just use la or whatever you want. And if you miss a note or two, just keep on singing, because that's what the rest of us do. Two. La 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 la
singing. That makes it so much fun. Well, uh, Marcy's putting down her cello banjo, which is a rare instrument as it is, and somehow fits beautifully in to the sound of China to Appalachia. She carries on the bass, but also some really beautiful lead lines that fit in beautifully with the Chinese um, both rhythms and scale tones. But we're now going to take it back to Eastern Europe and Russia. We're going to do a song that was originally a Russian folk song. It was a composed song, became a folk song, and then Django Reinhardt got hold of it and put his jazz minouche licks to it. And then Marcy said, there's no reason why I can't play that on the ukulele. <laughs> and then we said, there's no reason why we can't add Chinese dulcimer and some rhythm guitar to that. So here it is. It's called Dark Eyes. <laughs> So much. This next tune will give us a chance to uh, feature Marcy more on the cello banjo, which came to us through Mike Seeger, who came to our recording studio to do a session, brought his 1917 Gibson 
cello banjo with him. Marcy fell in love with it, and she became a different person that night. She just basically didn't put the cello banjo down for about six months, reinvented the things that could be done on it. Whoops. And now they're being made again? And they weren't a total failure like they thought back in 1916. Just a little fine tuning here. My question is capo or no? Oh, yes, capo. capo. This is one of those tunes that Mike collected um, and tried to play it exactly like the person he collected it from. Well, it's a hybrid of the very familiar Appalachian song, Shady Grove. Shade Grove, my true love. Shady Grove, my darling. Shade Grove, my true love. Going back to Harlan. And typically, the banjo would be in a tuning that goes. Well, the tuning that Mike recorded this person in sounded like this. Which, in the beginning, sounds wrong. You're like, where's that high note for the fifth string, and why is this so weird? Kathy's theory, based on absolutely nothing, just to be clear, is that the person's fifth string slipped down, and they just played it that way. And since Mike recorded it that way, he just learned it that way. And in the beginning, when you play it that way, it sounds weird, and then you get into the weirdness, and then you go, that's the fun part of the banjos when it gets really weird. So this is called Little Betty Ann. And then we're going to go into a tune called Kitchen Girl. And Kitchen Girl is one of the wonderful pieces that Alan Jabor collected from uh, Henry Reed. You can find it in the Library of Congress archives online. And we do a lot of looking online there for good tunes and for the history of some good tunes. And we want to give a heartfelt thanks to Alan Jabor, Alan Jabor for all the amazing collecting that he did and left behind this great music, not only of his own, but so many other great old time players. This is the thing that keeps tradition going. And yes, it lets us play with tradition and have our way with it. But if it wasn't there, we couldn't do that. And we're passing it on to the next group to do the same. So Little Betty Ann and Kitchen Girl. She's a pretty little girl, neither black nor brown. Just looks like thunderhead before the rain comes down. Step light, my little Betty Ann. Step light, I say. Step light, my little Betty Ann. I'm bound to go my way. I'm coming back again if I go 10,000 miles Going away, coming back again if I don't take sick and die Step alive, my little Betty Ann Step alive, day. Step alive, my little Betty Ann I'm bound to go my way Take sick, my love, and die so far from home. Who would hold your aching head and hear your pitiful moan? If I was to take sick, my love, and die so far from home, I'd lay my head down on a rock so I could hear my moan. Step 
light, my little Betty Ann. Step light, I say. Step light, my little Betty Ann. I'm bound to go my way. forgot to mention that when we were working up the tune um, Kitchen Girl, Chow said, oh, there's a Chinese tune that sounds just like that. And that's sort of where all this commonness comes together. And she played that right in the middle, in the same space where we would have played Kitchen Girl. And you'd have to really know that to go, oh, it's not the same tune. Oh, so you Chow's going to demonstrate a um, Chinese instrument, and we're just going to do a little improvisation over it. Okay. So, um, so um, the instrument I'm, I'm going to play is an ancient Chinese percussion called Si Bao. The translation is four treasures. As you can see, there are four pieces of bamboo sticks. So we call them treasures, four treasures. Um, it's similar to the rhythmic, rhythmic bone that, that folk musicians played in this country. Uh, and when we play, this, it sounds like this. <laughs> Some people say it sounds like cicadas, sounds like a rattle, rattle, rattle sounds, or anything you can imagine. Um, basically, when I play, I just hold each, uh, like two pieces of bamboos on each hand, make, make them separate, parallel separate, and you exert some magic. <laughs> you don't want people to see you, sh you are shaking on the 
stage, right? You must be elegant, you must be delicate, <laughs> make the sound right. Because this instrument is specifically for uh, a, a traditional genre in China called Nan Yin music, it's southern southern area of China. Uh, usually, it, it played very slow with beautiful movement and gestures. But for our collaboration, I might play it wild. <laughs> well, this is a collaboration and an experiment because we're going to be improvising behind Chow on Four Treasures. The Four Treasures. I say that much better than the Chinese word. songs for you and um, this is a song that I wrote uh, early in the pandemic it's called hold each other up and the funnest part of this song is how many people have been singing it in how many different circumstances I've gotten so much email from people all over the world oh I'm singing this with the singers that I work with I'm singing this with the kids that I work with that's that's when you feel like you've arrived as a songwriter. It has nothing to do with being a hit. It has something to do with the song having enough meaning 
that it gets translated to other languages, played on every instrument, and used in community sings. And so we're going to teach you the chorus. It goes like this. We're going to hold each other up. We're going to lift each other high. You sing that. We're going to hold each other up. We're going to lift each other high. We're going to love each other better than before. We're going to love each other better than before. This whole world will keep on turning and our hearts will keep on yearning. This whole world will keep on turning, and our hearts will keep on yearning. For each other when the world is so unsure. For each other when the world is so unsure. So why not have a rehearsal here, and then we'll go into the song. We're going to hold each other up. We're going to lift each other high. We're going to love each other better than before this whole world, this whole world will keep on turning, and our hearts will keep on yearning for each other when the world is so unsure. All right, here we go. And one of the things I love about when we do this is that Chow has somehow turned her Chinese hammer dulcimer into a honky tonk piano. <laughs> Required in a good old country gospel session. Here we go. A one. Two, oh, one, two, three. We're gonna hold each other up. We're gonna lift each other high. We're gonna love each other better than before, than before. This whole world will keep on turning, and hearts will keep on yearning for each other when the world is so unsure. We've seen troubles in the past, some gone by and some that last. But there's one thing that can help us all get by. If we listen to our hearts, each new day is a brand new start. We can love each other better if we try. We're gonna hold each other up, we're gonna lift each other high. Each other better than before, than before. This whole world will keep on turning, and our hearts will keep on yearning for each other when the world is so unsure. Joe Banjo. To be kind, it's a time to remind that deep down our differences are few. And as every minute weighs turn and worries into days, we believe that our love will see us through. Hold each other up, we're gonna hold each other up, we're gonna lift each other high, we're gonna love each other. When the world is so unsure
to thank you all so much for being here, for being a lovely audience, for singing along, and um, we're going to close with a Chinese tune. I'm going to ask Chow to uh, explain it to you, and um, this one's been a challenge for us because we really had to work on mastering the Chinese scale tones, and we're getting there with old time music. And um, one more hand for Marcy Markser. <laughs> for Chao Tien. And, and Kathy Fink. Okay, so the ending song is another famous Chinese tune. Come on, which one is not famous? <laughs> Everyone is famous. Uh, so the title is called Yong Jun Yang Ge. So Yang Ko is a, is a type of traditional dance in China. It's like a, the tap dance that I, it's, a, it's like a square dance that I explored. Not, not square dance, right? Yesterday? Flat foot dance. Flat foot dance. I explored in Floyd. I love it, but I cannot dance lovely. So <laughs> it is a good try. I, I, can f I cannot fail, where is my foot? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, the Yanko is a very traditional dance style that people dance for uh, fast I I during the festival. It's a very vivid feeling. Uh, the melody, it's in pentatonic, but we also add a, what do you call it, sour, sour, sour note? Sour note. Sour note. Sour note. Is there is a seven note in, uh, in this song, so make Kathy extraordinarily happy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so here is Yong Jun Yang Ge. <laughs> 